So uh, before we start, I have an announcement. Um, uh, let me use my calendar. Um, yeah. And 21st, uh, September 21st is our first midterm. And the time is not decided, but I think that will be from 4.25 p.m. to 5.25, yeah. And I think the official email will send to you by Professor Biagio uh, later this week. Um, so it will cover the electrical field, uh, magnetic field, and also Gaussian's law. And there will be uh, just one hour and uh, we suppose um, everybody use uh, the, uh, the Zoom meeting to join the Zoom meeting and HTA will give the uh, question and answer uh, during the exam. And if you have any question, you can ask the TA uh, on the meeting. Uh, and this meeting is closed book, closed note, but you're allowed to read your equation sheet but we cannot control that. So we trust you. And after the one hour, you uh, need to write down your solution and take a picture of your solution, then upload um, the PDF file on the course site. So the same thing. And uh, I think uh, if you uh, don't know how we give the, uh, the question or the how we give you the exam, you can go to the course site and we have previous year's exam. And then you can read the previous year's exam and get some idea how we test it. Okay, so this is the first day, uh, our first hour exam. One more thing is homework. Homework, homework. Okay, here, um, the homework, the first homework is not bad, um, but I found a common problem um, when students solving the first question. And the problem is that uh, students don't know uh, the electric field is a vector and they cannot use uh, the value and add them directly. So for example, uh, there are three charges let me quick read the description. Uh, there are three charges at the vortex of an equilateral triangle, and the distance from the center to each charge is the same, 7.17 centimeter, and the value of charge is this one. And we're going to calculate the magnitude of the electric field generated by one of the charges so to calculate the magnitude of the electric field, we use the Coulomb's law. The electric field equal to the constant K times uh, the charge and over the distance square. The distance I use R. The distance here is 7.17 centimeter. We convert to meter square. And the value of K is nine times 10 to the nine. Uh, 10, to the uh, 10 to the 9 times the charge, that will be 742 times uh, 10 to the negative 13. Okay, this is the magnitude of the electric field. And I know this is uh, no questions, but if you go to the second one, what's the total electric field? created by all three charges together at the center of this triangle. And I find uh, a few students use three times the electric field you calculate from the first question. This is not correct because the electric field is a vector. You cannot just add them by value. So electric field is a vector, vector. And if we uh, draw a free body diagram at the center, then you will find that um, 
The first charge is going to generate the electric field in this direction. The second charge is going to generate the electric field in this direction. The third one gives you electric field in this direction. So they are not parallel. We cannot just add them by value. So if you use the value times the three, this is not correct. Okay. So uh, if we consider the direction, then you will find because the triangle has the same side, has the same length for each side, they are symmetrical. So the electric field is symmetrical. Then the electric field will get there. The three electric fields will cancel out. Okay, because the, the structure and the center to each charge is the same, uh, is the same. So the electric fields are equivalent for each one, and the direction uh, uh, has three different directions, but they are symmetrical. So the electric field is zero. Okay, do you have any question? If no other question, I'm going to move to mastering physics. Mastering physics. Okay, so electric potential energy. This is a new idea, I think. In the homo, uh, in the physics one, we know gravitational potential energy, and open my note. Okay, so let me start with gravitational. Gravitational uh, potential energy. So we have a four this ball falls to the ground. This is ground. And we know the, the height is capital H. And the weight is mg. Uh, m is a mass, g is acceleration. And if the initial kinetic energy is zero, the velocity at the initial position is zero, then the kinetic energy at the ground on the ground uh, will be equal to the gravitational potential energy. That is mg times h. And this is based on the energy conservation. The kinetic, the change of kinetic energy equal to the change of potential energy. Kinetic energy equal to the potential energy. And if the kinetic energy increase, the potential energy decrease. So during the motion, the potential energy convert into the kinetic energy. This is in the physics one. And in the physics two, we have the same thing. If we have a electric field, Uniform electric field. In the electric field, there is a charge, a positive charge. Um, if this positive charge moves in the electric field, the moving direction is in this direction. Because you can think about that, imagine there are positive charge on this end. And negative charge on this end. And you will know the electric field start from the positive charge and the end to the negative charge. And the positive charge, this one, will be attractive by the negative charge and repulsive by the positive charge. So the moving direction is downward. Okay. If this charge starts from here and end to here, and the distance is L, the moving distance is L, then the this charge will gain kinetic energy. 
if the initial kinetic energy is zero, then the kinetic energy at the ending point will be equal to the potential energy. Here, the potential energy is called electric potential energy. Then, how to calculate the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy, uh, again, during this motion, is equal to the work done by the electric field. Is work um, by electric field. How to calculate the work? The work is equal to the electric force times the distance. The electric field uh, force is equal to the charge, charge Q, times the electric field. It's a uniform electric field, so we use a constant E then times the distance. Okay, so this is work. Then the work equal to the Q E L. Okay, Q E L, then this will be equal to the electric potential energy. So we have uh, the definition of the electric potential energy. That will be equal to the charge times the electric field times the distance. Okay. And this is uh, uh, the condition when we have a uniform electric field. If this electric field is not uniform, suppose we use a very big charge and generate an electric field in the space. And we have a small testing charge. And this charge is little q, it's capital Q. Okay. This little q, the little brother, is going to move in this way. They are repulsive, right? So at the beginning, the distance in between is R. Then we want to know um, what's the maximum kinetic energy that the little Q will gain. So we set the reference and we set the capital Q as a reference. So this is our reference. So in the reference, the capital Q is stationary and the little Q will move rightward. So the kinetic energy at the beginning, suppose is zero. So at eventually when this Q goes further and further, um, the electric field go to weaker and the weaker, but the kinetic energy increase. So if we just uh, uh, draw a diagram as a distance, distance in between, then the y-axis is the force, repulsive force, then you will find the repulsive force decrease. Decrease, and go to very small and small. And if we, I uh, want to calculate the, the kinetic energy. Then you will find at the beginning, the kinetic energy is zero. Then it increase, 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 and go to infinity. Okay, then let's calculate the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is equal to the work, and the work is equal to the force times L, the distance. But the force is not a constant. We know the force equal to K times Q, little q, then distance squared, right? So the force is a function of L. 
then we cannot use the simple multi um, multiplication to calculate the work. We have to use integral. So we integrate, uh, we integrate the force on the distance. And distance here, let's uh, unif uniform the, uh, the variable. So use R to represent the distance. R to represent the distance. So then we will have K capital Q little Q R square dr. Then this integral will give us um, a value, but let's see. And the integration is starting from the R. This is the initial position, initial position. Then we end to the infinity because the R is going to, the, the little Q is going to move further away. So that will be give us K capital Q R minus. It's an integral and the up limit is infinity. The down limit is initial distance. Then this will be equal to the k q q over r initial distance. Okay, so this is the electric potential energy that stored in the pair of charges. So if you have two charge and one is Q1, the other is Q2, and we ask you to calculate the poten electric potential energy of this pair of charges, then the potential energy is equal to the K over the distance in between times the value of Q1 and the value of Q2. Okay. This is the potential energy. Then let's go back to the Moskvin physics. And there are three charges. And you know the charge of each one and the distance in between. Then the question is, what's the electric potential energy of the three charges? When we have two charges, uh, it's easy. That's a K, Q1, Q2 over the distance. But if we have three charges, then we just need to do pair by pair. So we calculate the electric field. We calculate, calculate the electric field, electric potential energy peer by peer. So we have three charges. We have three pair. Right? So the three pair is going to give us a three value. So P will be equal to the potential energy equal to K. The first pair is Q1, Q2 over X. Okay. Then the second pair, that will be the Q1, Q2 over Y. Third pair, that will be Q2, Q2 over the distance. We use a geometry equation that will be X squared plus Y squared. This is how we calculate the electrical potential energy. Okay, do you have any question? Oh, I have a question. Can we just use the equation um, or are we gonna be are we gonna be asked to like integrate the like how like use the integral to get the equation ever? 
uh, no, we don't ask you to do the derivation uh, of each formula. And this formula you can find on the equation sheet. Um, we will ask you to use this formula to do the calculation, but not ask you to confirm uh, how to get this equation. Okay, thank you. Okay, next problem will be the number five. Okay, number five. There is a big charge in the center, big charge, and there is a electron, electron carry negative charge. That's a common knowledge. And the electron move from the point I to the point F. Uh, point I to point F. Then two questions. First one, does the electron potential energy of the electron increase, decrease, or stay the same? Let's do this. If, uh, let me go back to the note. If we have two charge, one is positive, the other is positive. And intrinsically, if there's just the electric fields and the electric force, then this two charge is going to repulse each other, right? repulse each other. And in this case, the distance increase. Distance increase and the potential energy decrease. So because the electric force is going to do positive work, um, to separate these two charges. So under the electric force, this two charge goes, uh, goes further and further than the electric potential energy decrease. So for the same sign, for the same sign, if two charges has the same sign, And if the distance increase, the electric potential energy decrease because they repulse each other. But if one is a positive charge, the other is a negative charge, they attract each other. So if the distance increase, the potential energy increase. If two charges with different sign, and distance increase, the potential energy increase. Because when we uh, try to uh, move away one of the charge, we have to input work. We are going to input energy to make this two charge goes further. Okay, this is uh, uh, the conclusion right here. Then go back to the Mosfin physics. You see from I to F, the two opposite charges goes further. If they go further, then the uh, kinetic energy decrease and the potential energy increase. Two. opposite charges uh, go further and the potential energy increase. So we choose this one, the uh, potential energy increase. Then let's go to the kinetic energy. We know the uh, energy is conserved. Energy conserved. So the kinetic energy plus the potential energy 
is a constant. If this is a constant, then we will know one increase, the other will decrease. So the kinetic energy decrease. So the electron speed at F is less than the speed at I. So you are thinking in another way. If they attract each other, then going to the attraction direction, then the energy decrease. If they go to the opposite direction, the energy increase. The energy I, I mentioned here is a potential energy. Or you can think about the positive charge is a ground. This is ground. And this is height. and the height at I is smaller than the height of F. So that means this charge goes up. If the charge goes up in the gravity, you know the gravitational potential energy increase. So the same idea, if they attract together, if they attract each other, then you move further, then you have to include more energy, then the potential energy increase. Okay, this is uh, number five. The next one will be the number eight. Uh, number eight. Number eight, electric potential. Okay, just now we talk about the electric potential energy. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the electric potential. Okay, um, the electric electric potential energy and the electric potential are not the same thing, uh, but they have a relation. And uh, we, we know the electric potential energy in a uniform electric field is equal to the charge times the electric field times the distance. But we know the charge inside the electric field is a constant, it doesn't change. So, the meaningful uh, parameter to describe the electric field is the electric field and the distance. So we define the electric field times the distance as the potential. Fine. Potential equal to the electric field time the distance, okay. Here, suppose we have electric field in this way, and the charge move from here, down here, and only under the electric force. If there is only electric force, this motion will cause electric potential energy. So we know electric potential energy decrease. Decrease and kinetic energy increase. And also we know the electric field um, has a direction. This is a vector, the direction. Then if we calculate the potential, we will find that the high, uh, if the electric potential energy decrease, then we say this position, this is a positive charge, this position has a low potential. And here has high potential. Then along the direction of electric fields, the positive charge lose electric potential energy. So it moves from the high potential region to the low potential region. So in this case, um, the, direct, uh, the, the decreasing direction of the potential is not the same direction of electric field. So if we have a direction um, on the electric field, you will find the value of the electric field will give the opposite potential gradient. So the gradient of the electric potential right here, right here, 
the gradient. of electric potential. Potential is opposite direction. Of electric field. You see the gradient uh, high potential, low potential, the gradient is here. This is the gradient of the potential. And the direction of the electric field is downward, goes down. So this two direction has opposite direction. So we say um, the V actually is equal to minus electric field times the distance. So if we only ask you to calculate the magnitudes, uh, you can neglect the, the minus sign. And, but you need to remember that these two directions are opposite. Okay. The gradient of the electric potential is opposite direction of the electric field. So in this way, we can calculate the electric potential by just using the magnitudes of the electric field times the distance in the uniform electric field. Electric field. Okay. And we can also use uh, the potential over the distance to calculate the magnitude of the electric field. So when we talk about the electric field, you don't need to uh, consider the, the minus sign or positive sign. So you just need to give me the value. So um, if we consider the, the, uh, the sign, we have to use direction to calculate uh, the electric field. So um, to make sure you're not confused, let's go back to the Mosfin physics and to see how we use this equation. So there are an uh, OTV. OTV has two parallel plates. The two parallel plates uh, is going to generate a very high voltage and potential difference between them. Okay, the electric potential difference has another name, voltage. Potential. Oh. Potential difference has another name for the voltage. Okay, so here there are two plates, and the electric field goes in this way, and the difference of the potential is twenty-two thousand k, thousand v. And the electron enters through a small hole, small hole, and oh, the, the direction is wrong. Okay, let me rewrite. This uh, uh, electron and the direction of electric field shift goes leftward. And we can imagine there are positive charge there are positive charge oh. there are positive charge on this side and negative charge on this side then. Uh, this charge generates an electric field in between. And if there is an electron entering uh, this hole, the electron is going to attract it by the positive so, uh, charge. So the electron moves in this way. Then we know uh, the voltage, the potential difference is 22,000 V, and the distance 
between the two parallel plates is 1.1 centimeter, then the electric field could be calculated by using the voltage in between over the distance. Okay, that will be equal to 22,000 V over 1.1 centimeter convert to meter. Okay. That is uh, the result. Okay. Part B, what's the speed that the electron X the electron gum if its entry speed is close to zero. So let's go back to this figure. And at the beginning, the electron has zero speed. Speed is zero. And we want to calculate the speeds when this ele electron has this end. What's the speed when the electron X the gun? Okay, go to the other side. And we use the conservation of the energy. The energy conserved. So we know the change of kinetic energy equal to the change of the potential energy. The potential energy we know is equal to the charge times the potential difference then that will be equal to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one over two mv squared. V is the speed, okay, the axis speed. And the V is the voltage. This is the potential difference. So we can calculate the axis speed equal to square root two times the charge times the times the voltage over the mass okay and you can find the value of, of the electron and the value of the mass on the equation sheet where, where do you find the equation sheet I haven't come up before. Uh, call side, uh, call side, I think. Uh, chat. Call side. Here's a hidden for you. So I opened it for you. Um, hold on. Okay, now you can see. Thank um, you. If you open the, the equation sheet, you see. Uh, let me see, the mass of the electron here. And the, the charge of the electron is here. So those two value could find on the top, top here. The fundamental con constant. Oh, okay. And let me go to the Austin Felix. Okay, uh, we have 10 minutes. Then I have one more question. So what, number 10. Number 10 is when we have a electric field, how do we calculate the electric potential? And 
So we have a potential difference between y from 0.4 to 4. And so we can also draw a diagram. Here is a 4, here's a minus 4 in between. There is the electric field. So the electric field has a direction. In the x direction, that's a 220,000. In the y direction, that's a minus 25,000. So the direction is this way. So this way, this way. Then we calculate the potential from here minus four to four. So calculate this one. So from minus four to four, first one, we need to determine does a potential increase or decrease, right? Um, if this direction is parallel to the electric field, then that's a decrease. If it's inter-parallel, then that's uh, in increase. And we know uh, the distance and the electric field has an angle. So to calculate the voltage, we cannot just use the electric field times the distance. We have to use dot product. So use electric field dot the distance. Okay. So the electric field has two components, 20,000 I minus 25,000. Okay, and don't forget the minus sign from. And we have minus sign times the distance of L. So L is from minus four to four. Okay, so that will be minus eight centimeter j and x is zero. Okay, then we do the dot product. So x component x component ooh, x component times zero as a zero. Y component, this is positive and negative. Y component is negative 25,000 times a centimeter. And there is a minus sign from, so positive. So you will get 2,000 volts. Okay, so in this case, uh, we just need to know, first one, uh, does the potential, we calculate is increasing or decreasing. The second one, we use dot product to calculate the electric field times the distance minus sign in front, we get the uh, voltage. And this is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. And I gave you a uh, uh, a summary. Okay, so the first one, um, to calculate the electric potential, we are going to use uh, the integral. We integrate the electric field over the space. If the electric field is uniform, then uh, we can simplify the integral as the electric field times the distance. And the minus sign tell us the change of the potential is opposite direction of electric field. And if we just ask you to calculate the magnitude, you can erase the minus sign. And the second one, if the electric field is not a constant, 
um, for example, we have point charge, then the potential generated by the point charge um, depends on the distance from the testing point to the center of the charge. So the voltage, uh, the potential is equivalent to a constant times uh, the value of charge over the distance. The third one is when we have the electric potential, how do we calculate electric potential energy? So the ratio is the charge. So if we know the change of the potential, then we times, uh, we multiply the change of potential by a charge, that's electric potential energy. If we know the potential energy, we use the potential energy over the charge, that's the electric potential. So the energy and the potential has a ratio of Q. And uh, the last one is how to calculate the electric potential energy stored in a pair of charges. And we just use uh, a K constant times the value of each charge, then over the distance. So this is uh, today's, we are going to review this. And we have a couple of minutes. I want to show you some simulation. Uh, when we have two charges, um, how does uh, uh, electro potential look like? Electro potential. Uh, we can just take a look. And this simulation um, just use two charges. Uh, Q1 is five coulomb, Q2 is one coulomb. First one you see, um, this is uh, electric potential. On the left side, the charge is one. And the right side, the charge is five. Okay, so uh, near the five, the electric field is larger than on the light, left. So you can just check the, uh, the color and the color bar tell you the value. And you can also take a look at 3D structure. The 3D structure. So on the left, uh, the electric potential is smaller than the uh, electric potential on the right. And I also, um, draw the draw the electric potential in the contour. So on the left, you see the electric potential um, is from four to six to eight. When we approach the, the the center of charge, the potential increase. But on the right, when we approach to the center of the charge. The potential increase a lot. So from the eight, uh, from the six, to the eight, to the ten, then even goes larger. So this is a contour, and I just draw the equal potential line, and um, to give you the idea how does the electric potential look like. Then at the same time, I could also draw the electric field line. Electric field line. And you find that um, the black line are electric field, and the arrow tell you the direction of the electric field, and you will find that the electric field line is perpendicular to the equal potential uh, surface. So you can see this is perpendicular, the perpendicular, perpendicular. So all the electric field is perpendicular to the equal potential line. That means. The uh, electric field is a gradient of the potential. And if we use potential to do the integral, then we'll get the electric field. So this is the uh, idea. Um, if we have two charges, how does the electric field look like? How does the electric potential look like? Let's go back here so you can see. They are, they are similar. Okay. So uh, this is what I'm going to talk today. Um, on Friday, we will have uh, another quiz and it will cover the electric potential and the electric potential energy. 
So um, if you have no question, uh, you're good to go. And we will see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is our um, quiz, quiz from last week up or no? Uh, what do you mean the quiz up? The quiz on, the, on last Friday. Uh, the quiz on last Friday. Um, let me see. Quiz on last Friday. Uh, you can see the grid, right? Um, I was looking earlier. No, the grid is not there. Yeah, I only see quiz one right now. Okay, so let me double check. Um, double check. Give me a couple of minutes. Great. One. Yeah, you can see the, the quiz too. Hold on, let me share my screen. So you see, uh, you see the quiz one and the quiz two. So quiz one and the quiz two are already here. But where are um where are they on course site? On course site, you can go to your grades. Oh wait, I think. Um, hold on. Because I can only see like the first one under the quiz section. Mm, yeah. Uh. If you go here, let's see with the grades. Oh, I go. I have to go with grades. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.